In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this really simple but really effective circle loading animation. So let's get into it. So once you're inside of Adobe After Effects and you have a new composition created, we're first just going to begin by creating a guide for our circle. So I'm just going to turn on the proportional grid. So go into this option here, select proportional grid. Then we'll just go up into this top bar. It's currently set to the rectangle tool, but we'll drag this down to the ellipse tool. We'll make sure that the fill has no fill. Press OK on that. We'll go to the stroke, make sure the stroke has a solid color and make sure the width of this is somewhere around 10 pixels. Then you just want to hold down shift on your keyboard, go roughly to this point here and just drag this down. Doesn't need to be perfect, but once you're happy with the look of that, let go press A on the keyboard, and we'll move this into the middle using the anchor point. There you go. And once you're happy with the look of that, you just want to press the padlock icon to lock that. And then when you turn off the proportional grid, you will see that we've got this really awesome guide for our animation. So from here, we just want to go ahead and create a new circle layer. So again, we'll go into that circle layer that should already be selected. We'll hold shift on the keyboard and just draw a circle on the left side of the animation. Now you want to go into fill and make sure there is a solid fill color. Press OK. You can have the stroke if you want here, but you don't need the stroke here. So I'm just going to turn this off for now. Press OK. And that is now your first circle created. Of course, if you wanted to make this larger, then you can just go ahead and press S and increase the scale. But before we carry on, I just want to press A on the keyboard to load the anchor points. And this is the anchor point here. We just want to align this anchor point up to the middle of the circle. So we'll just move these together like so. And then we'll turn on the proportional grid. And I'm just going to move this up onto the top like so. Now I'm just going to decrease the scale down just a little bit, just because we've got a few circles to fit in here. But from here, we'll press T on the keyboard to load opacity. We'll pull the opacity down to 0%. Create a brand new keyframe on the opacity. We'll go one keyframe over to the right. So we'll go one frame over. Pull that up to 100. And then we'll go roughly, roughly half a second over to the right. So at the moment, it's 15 frames over. And we'll pull this down to 0. So if we play this back, you'll see this appears and then slowly disappears. If that motion was too quick for you though, then you can always just pull this keyframe over to the right and that will take longer to fade away. And then once you're happy with the look of that, you just want to select that circle layer. We'll go Command Shift D and then delete the last half of that. So we've just got this short one second circle appearing and disappearing. Of course, you can always rename this layer if you wanted to. So we'll go Rename Circle. Now we need to figure out how many circles we need. So we've got one here. We'll probably have two here, one there, two here, one there, two here, one there, and another two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So we've got 12 circles there. So at the moment we've got one. So we'll go Command C to copy or Control C if you're on Windows. And then we'll paste that in 11 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 12. There we go. So we'll go to circle two and we'll drag this over and place that roughly there. If you move over to where the opacity has reduced, you want to make sure that the anchor point is sitting on this guide here. Then we'll select circle three. We'll move this over to there. Circle four, you want to make sure that it is sitting on this line there. Feel free to close any gaps here if there's any inconsistencies. We'll go to circle five and we'll drag that down. Now from here, feel free to go in and make any adjustments to these. So this one needs to go up and there's too much of a gap there. Too much of a gap here as well. There's not enough of a gap between these two. So I'm just going to change that. And then once you're happy with the look of that, you can now get rid of this big circle guide. So we'll go down, we'll go shape layer, unlock that, we'll select the eyeball icon and then padlock that. So we've still got it if we need it, but it's just padlocked. So as you can see, we've got these all appearing at the same time, but of course we want to stagger them. So we'll go to the very beginning 
we'll select the first circle layer and that can stay where it is, but circle two can go two frames to the right. <clears throat> then we'll move up to circle three and this can move another two frames over and just keep doing this process over and over again, making sure that there's two frames between each layer. So each layer is going to start two frames after the one before. There you go. So if you've done that correctly, this is what your loading bar should look like. And as you can see, that's pretty much perfect. The problem is though, it does disappear after a while and we only have the one rotation. So from here, we're going to select all of those circle layers. We'll right click, go pre-compose and we'll call this loop and press OK. Now we want to go to the point where this finally disappears. So here it disappears. We'll go command shift D or control shift D if you're on Windows and delete the second part of that video. So we've just got one loop and then that disappears. So from here, we're just going to make a copy of that. So command C, command V or control C, control V. We'll move that over. So this one appears there. So two frames over from there. We want this new one to come in. Like so. The problem is though, there was just a little bit of a hesitation. So we'll just move this one frame over to the left. And that's perfect. So from here, you can just go ahead and copy both of those loop layers. Go Command C, Command V. And then again, you just want to do the same thing. So move that to where it needs to be moved to. So somewhere around here. There you go. That's perfect. So we can copy all of those loop layers. Command C, Command V. We'll move these over to the right. Figure out where this needs to go. So roughly here. And then once you've got enough of those in, you can just highlight all of those. Go to the end of this one here. We'll go right click, pre-compose, press OK on this, and then delete the last part of that animation there. And then that's just going to keep looping for the entire eight seconds. And of course, if you wanted this to last longer than those eight seconds, then you can just copy this and then just move this over to where that needs to go to and just keep repeating this process. But the great news is once you've got your final pre-composition here, you can reduce the scale of this. You can move the position of this. You can place this wherever you need this to go. Or you can add keyframe animation to this and it will affect all of those individual layers. Of course, because these are all in pre-compositions, if we go into that pre-comp one, we'll go into the loop layer. We've got all of these circles. You can actually change the color of each individual circle. So if we go effects and presets, search for tint, we'll drop tint onto the first layer and we can map the white to a color of your choice. So we'll go red in this example. We'll copy tint, put it onto two and we'll change this to a pink. Then we'll go circle three, we'll paste that in, change the color to more of a blue, and then just keep repeating this process over and over again until you've added this tint effect onto every individual circle here. And then once you've successfully added in the tint effect to all of those individual circles, if we go back to our main comp, you can see we've got this multicolored loading circle effect. And there you go, that is how you create this loading or buffering animation right inside of Adobe After Effects. Thank you for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.